Will our universe come to an end? Will it rip to shreds in a flash? Collapse on itself, turning the unimaginable. And they're coming up with some wild ideas about how it's all going to end. A battle is taking place in the farthest... The universe is going to end. It won't happen for billions of years, but there is no way out. Toward the heavens to unlock the secrets of our fate. The possibilities are frightening. Balloon. The universe goes back to its original size. This is the big crunch. That'd be the end of the universe in a big clear furnaces that power all the stars burn out. The universe grows cold and dies. A second possibility is actually Kanchen removes our nearest neighbors from us and we just end up a single isolated community of stars and galaxies. Then again, it's filled with too much air. It pops. It's much more dramatic than the big chill and just as fateful as the big crunch. Brick cannot hold the universe together. However the end comes, it will be a dramatic conclusion. Overlooking Pasadena, California. In 1929, while looking through what was then the world's largest telescope, it was a dynamic environment and that it evolved. It changed in time. And that's different from pictures that people had of cosmology previous to that. That the universe is expanding meant it had a starting point. A beginning. that began and that was where the idea of a big bang came from the big bang one common misconception about the big bang is that we can identify a point in space where the big if the universe has been expanding since the big bang Scientists must consider that it will stop expanding at some point. The question is, what goes up must come down. Stars and galaxies and everything else might reverse direction. The universe would collapse in what some scientists call a model rocket offers clues to how the big crunch would work. The rocket is like the universe expanding into space out of the big bang. The engine blast gets the rocket moving off its launch. It appears as it's climbing upward that it will never stop. But Earth's gravity won't allow this to go on forever. Eventually, it happen with a big crunch. The entire universe is essentially pulled back to its launch pad. The universe itself has its own, the rocket that we saw, and have to fall back in upon itself and collapse again under the force of its own gravity. Creation and destruction. The big crunch theory moved to a scientific back burner. Cosmologists' existence of such a force leads to new theories about what the universe is made of and how it might end. And evidence about how this might play out. Predicting how the universe will end involves some...
At an elevation of nearly 4,300 meters, the Keck telescopes bring astronomers from light at as high as possible above the Earth's polluted air. Harsh conditions make it difficult to work here. But it's extremely hard to work here, but these telescopes are amazingly powerful. But we're ambitious astronomers. We don't just stop looking at easy objects. We try hard to look at working on a problem that has been all-consuming for cosmologists since Edwin Hubble. They know the universe is expanding, but what they don't know is how fast. Sun-based telescope as a time machine. We're looking back in time to study distant galaxies seen as they were a long, long time ago. Objects that technology has only recently been able to see. Einstein said that there has to be more mass in the universe than we can actually see. He predicted that there would be patches of invisible supergravity from which not even light. It was in the constellation Cygnus and emitted no light. But something was there. Whatever was emitting these X-rays had a mass. Black holes offer scientists an analogy to how the big crunch theory works. When certain stars run out, the gravitational pull is so powerful that anything that falls near a black hole will be forever trapped, not even light. This black tarp represents space, and space is relatively flat, but when you put a massive orbit, full circular orbit, basically the black hole trapped it into an orbit around itself and that orbit becomes very circular as it gets closer what if eventually all of the matter in the universe were enough to gravitationally cause it to collapse into one huge black hole from one we might go into one and that's one way you can look at it on a big macroscopic scale but black holes in some ways their physics is very a black hole's gravitational pull is a scaled down version of the force that could cause the universe to collapse that force is dark matter and dark matter is uh, attracts other objects where it's gravitational attraction it's a positive force the whirlpool in Richard Ellis's demonstration represents the gravitational force of dark matter the green dye acts as the focus the gas in the universe bringing structure together this is how the milky way developed as the universe expanded little things merging in each other and eventually the universe would start collapsing gravity would eventually halt the expansion bring it back together in a big crunch we wouldn't be anywhere we wouldn't exist today to be able to ask these questions because there's not enough time for gravity to have condensed the atomic matter that we know exists in the cosmos. This suggests the opposing force of dark energy could be stronger than dark matter. But it will take scientific detective work to find out. They the universe is expanding. These are explosions at the end of the lives of stars, not unlike our sun. The fuel that these stars have in their centers is... ...stars orbiting nearby, a companion star. A massive explosion could happen if the companion star's debris falls onto the white dwarf, causing a spectacular firework stars or supernovae, like in these images captured by the Hubble telescope, to be reliable telltales of how fast the universe expands. They're brief and nuclear bombs. They explode with a certain brightness and a certain length of time. It takes a certain amount of time for that brightness to dissipate. They are essentially standard candles. Speed of the 
these exploding stars by measuring the amount of red light they emit. The faster the star moves away from us, the redder its light appears. Expands following the initial explosion. And so there's a lot of physics that we can study about the individual events. The expansion rate of galaxies containing star velocities of galaxies with their distances. These are the clues that lead astronomers to answer just how soon the universe will reverse direction. And Dr. Ellis is looking at clues at the Keck Observatory in Hawaii. While the telescope is on the top of a huge volcano, Johan Reschar is at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, California, evaluating the light from a distant galaxy that the Keck telescope captured in Hawaii. We can interpret that as a velocity of how much uh, the galaxy is moving. Red shift is the cornerstone of the quest to pin down the fate of the universe. Clearer pictures of this is startling. Not only is the universe expanding, it's speeding up. Nothing in the observable against gravity. Cosmologists have come up with a name dark energy. So when the universe was young, gravity was the most energy and gravity are pretty well in balance. But the universe continues to expand, the density goes down, and so dark energy starts to take over. And lo and behold, so we're trying to understand how much energy there is, and we know the universe is expanding as it as it moves outward with time. We also know now that the universe's expansion is ex the fate of the universe. We have to know how much energy is there, how much matter is there. The history of the universe, the competition between these two forces. The Big Crunch theory was a result of scientists interpreting that dark matter is the dominant force. But astronomers... ...systems that pulls apart stars, and eventually it grows so strong that it pulls apart matter itself, breaks bonds, pulls apart atoms, and reduces everything to fundamental... And dark energy, the force seeking to tear it apart, has set the universe on a path of destruction. If dark matter is the victor, there's up the entire universe. It'll be a strange twist of fate. Dark energy, the force that propelled matter to form a magnificent universe, is in fact winning the battle. Scientists will first need to know how fast the universe is actually expanding. This balloon, as we expand it, we see that every dot drawn on this black balloon, like the night sky, is moving. But there is something else that we know about the universe, something else that we know about the expansion. That is that the expansion is getting faster. The universe is accelerating fast enough that something really dramatic could happen. The universe could end up tearing itself apart in a big rip. Coldwell attempts an earthbound experiment to show how dark energy affects the acceleration of the universe. He uses a paintball gun mounted on a truck. Earth's gravity pulls the vehicle downhill, which is similar to how dark energy propels the universe outward, causing it to expand. Gravity pulls the truck dots to calculate just how fast the truck was accelerating. He'll use the data from this experiment to see how gravity's force compares to dark energy. The degree of acceleration is not known, and it's the subject of a lot of effort by astronomers today to try and figure out exactly how fast the expansion is growing. What is the path? The acceleration is beyond a certain threshold, and beyond that threshold, there's a runaway effect that could take place and would rip apart the universe.
five feet, eight, eight and a half inches. The point of the paintball experiment is to find parallels between the truck fast the interval. Within a few measurements, the distance between the paint spots increases by nearly seven times. If the ten minutes. They're getting big now. The question for Robert Caldwell is whether the same kind of expansion and acceleration are happening on a cosmic scale. This nice parabolic shape, that's exactly what you expect for an accelerating body. Now over here I've got another calculation going on where I'm uh, working out the acceleration. Demonstration then gives a sense of the dramatic rate of expansion that appears to be happening in the cosmos. By eye, it might be difficult to appreciate. If, like the truck, the universe is continually accelerating, then billions of years from now, the universe might tear its... While the distant stars and galaxies will be pulled away from, from each other, they'll be pulled away from us. But moreover, we won't have time to grow or torn apart before the universe ends. It wouldn't happen for at least 50 billion years, but still it's an interesting fate. Solid. Atoms join together to create something that will hold a cappuccino without leaking a single drop. Zoom in through the cup like sailing through the cosmos. A matter. If these particles were to move apart, the bonds that hold this cup together stop working to exist. It disintegrates, gone from existence. This is the dramatic end that Robert Caldwell foresees for the universe. What you would see as a wall of darkness approaches, uh, stars would go out, galaxies would go out, and then eventually uh, that wall of darkness would surround the planet, and then pretty soon... Oh, that moment is still billions of years off, leaving plenty of time to refine their research. In a way, this is like a detective of the modus operandi. We don't know exactly how it works. What's needed is more information, more information about the physics behind the dark energy. We want to know. The Big Rip is one theory. Cruising just above Earth's atmosphere and peering deep into space, the Hubble telescope provides. Scientists now say the universe is expanding and that depending on how fast it is accelerating, it might end in a big rip where everything tears apart, but will become dark, cold, and lifeless. If dark energy turns out to be constant, a constant property of space and continues at the same rate... Evidence for the big chill and all of the theories for the end of the universe, in part, come from the Hubble Space Telescope. It has been orbiting Earth since 1990, and detail. And because of Hubble, scientists can make better predictions about how the universe will end. So, here is in space. And if you looked at this from a typical uh, ground-based image before Hubble was launched, first of all, it's, it's a, literally a, almost size of a postage stamp, the ground. A tremendous power. Each of these smudges in their own right um, is another galaxy. Each one of these galaxies contains about a hundred billion. Through image processing with computers and differencing frames on taken on different nights, we can take out the other galaxies in the image. sees more than just stars and galaxies, dark matter. Scientists talk about dark matter as the substance that holds the universe together. It sometimes appears as though other galaxies surround them. The other galaxies are not really there at all. Rather, they are reflections of more 
the light from the more distant galaxies is literally bent by the curvature of space caused by stars and dark matter in its path. The gravitational lensing is a tremendous tool for the astronomer because we can measure the distortion in background galaxies and use it to trace galaxies as passing through clumps of dark matter. What you look at is not really what's happening. Uh, it's a bit like wearing spectacles and not knowing that you're wearing them. And if you can tell us around that dark matter behaving the way it should given the gravity or not, Identifying which energy force dominates. Dark matter is the driving force. But by how much? Solving this mystery depends on astronomers finding ways to measure how fast the universe is moving. We can look at it and calculate its speed by estimating the distance it travels and timing how long it takes to get from one point to another. But as it's too far away to gauge its speed or distance traveled with any certainty. The universe is expanding. Only scientists can and even observe the galaxies that are in this image before Hubble Space Telescope was launched. So the, the increase in our capability with technology recently has been astounding. It's enabled it's easier to estimate the rate of expansion. If the universe continues to expand with time, then ultimately all of the energy sources, the new only cold planet as the universe expands. Distances between stars grow so vast that they nearly disappear from view. Over time, they burn out. Only neither of them lived long enough to see the results. You know, Einstein thinking about the expanding universe as a natural solution of his equations, but puzzled, you know, that the universe didn't appear. At the time that Einstein developed the general theory, we didn't know that there were other galaxies outside of our own Milky Way galaxy. And we didn't know that the universe was expanding. That result to say the universe must be expanding or the universe must be contracting. Still, his work led to the scientific breakthroughs that would identify that the marbles coming out of the sphere are like stars that were formed following the Big Bang. Dark energy propels the stars outward. Dark matter slows them down. From Earth's perspective, the first thing to go would be sunlight. The sun dims as it exhausts its a few newer stars might remain, but most would have long moved away. The furnace powering them. A frozen and lifeless remnant of its once vibrant existence. Energy density. The universe will continue to expand forever. It's going to get colder and colder. And eventually, even the gal our neighboring galaxies will be receding from us so fast that we will... To learn about the influence of dark energy and dark matter. And much of the newest information is coming from this probe in deep space. It's sending back information. The night sky, by all appearance, is a quiet and peaceful place. But astronomers closer to deciphering the universe's great mysteries, including its ultimate fate. The solution to the universe is even more fantastic. It reveals a great story that helps cosmologists predict how it will end. What we're looking at here is the edge of the visible universe. It's the light that WMAP measured, left, it's the remnant heat from the Big Bang, expansion rate was like, and really what the conditions were at the birth of our universe. WMAP is one of the great astronomical breakthroughs of the 21st century. Nothing before. 
WMAP is measuring temperature differences in the cosmic microwave background, which may finally make it possible to predict which force will dominate the universe. Big bang that are slightly colder than the average temperature, and the red spots are regions that are slightly hotter than the average. Temperature differences revealed by W's not only about the substance, but also the fate of the universe. We only capture a tiny part of the electromagnetic spectrum with our eyes. So precise that it can detect differences in temperatures as small as one one thousandth of a degree. This sensitivity held scientists to calculate the ratio of... Make a map of what the variations look like. And by turning up the, uh, the contrast, we can, we can basically subtract off this uniform glow. That image comes to life. Looking at WMAP imagery is in essence taking a journey back through space and time so that we might get some new ideas on the fate of the universe. Pulling away from the probe and following the path of the light it is collecting, we pass Mars. Choosing the Milky Way, we pass Andromeda, the next nearest galaxy whose light takes 2.3 million years to reach us. Which means... And finally, we arrive back 13 billion years ago. You can see this far back in history. It's confirming important facts about the universe and what's driving it to its demise with the work of astronomers has led to some astounding discoveries concerning a rapidly expanding universe. Rapid expansion supports the dark energy theory and... ...on more dark energy than dark matter. So dark energy is the dominant constituent of the energy in the universe. The evidence seems clear. Dark energy. Things were a lot simpler. If we could determine the amount of matter in the universe, then we could say something about its ultimate destiny. Those simple days are gone. But the proof is adding up. ...century and learning something about the evolution of the universe and its expansion. But we've now raised more questions in some sense than we've been able to answer. And so I think... For ...all of these questions. And I think that's the exciting future because if you, if you can go out and really observe something, you're testing it. And that's what science is all about. But no pursuit has been more significant to science than understanding how the universe arrived, how it works. The universe, the nature of dark matter, and perhaps the biggest mystery of all, what is the ultimate fate? of the universe. But no pursuit has been more significant to science than understanding how the universe arrived, how it works. It was in the constellation Cygnus and emitted no light. But something was there. Whatever was emitting these X-rays had a mass so precise that it can detect differences in temperatures as small as one one thousandth of a degree. This sensitivity helped scientists to calculate the ratio of the gravitational pull is so powerful that anything that falls near a black hole will be forever trapped. Not even light is the driving force, but by how much? Solving this mystery depends on astronomers finding ways to measure how fast the universe is moving. That the universe is expanding meant it had a starting point. A beginning. Big Bang that are slightly colder than the average temperature and the red spots are regions that are slightly hotter than the average temperature differences revealed by w 
WMAP is measuring temperature differences in the cosmic microwave background, which may finally make it possible to predict which force will dominate the universe. And eventually the universe would start collapsing. Gravity would eventually halt the expansion, bring it back together in a big crunch. Einstein said that there has to be more mass in the universe than we can actually see. He predicted that there would be patches of invisible supergravity from which not even 